In the name of the risen Christ. Amen. Very truly, I tell you, when you were younger, you used to fasten your own belt and to go wherever you wished. But when you grow old, you will stretch out your hands and someone else will fasten a belt around you and take you where you do not wish to go. After this, he said to him, follow me. We know as much about Peter as we know about any of the followers of Jesus. We know he was a leader among the 12 who led with conviction, boldness, and courage. And yet, he denied Jesus three times, fell asleep in the garden, hid with the others after the crucifixion, and often seemed to misunderstand Jesus and the mission he was such an integral part of while Jesus was still with the 12. Simon, Cephas, Peter, as unlikely a man as any to lead a movement that would change the world. Unlikely to anyone but Jesus, who gave him the cognomen, the extra personal name, the nickname, Cephas, Rock. As one source notes, the giving of a cognomen was taken very seriously so it would seem that Jesus recognized Peter's strength of character despite his flaws and was willing to establish him as a source of strength to the others. Peter was called and commissioned to be the foundation of the church. Saul was transformed in name and mission by a dramatic encounter with the risen Christ. This is the part of the story that's so familiar to us. Who is Ananias? He's a new convert to the faith who fled from Jerusalem to Damascus to avoid persecution by Saul. And who does Jesus send Ananias to find in the street called Straight? Ananias is afraid. He knows the stories of Saul and the evil he has done. He knows that Saul has the authority to bind all who invoke the name of Jesus. He does not want to go. Jesus says, Go, for he is an instrument that I have chosen. So Ananias went and laid his hands on him in the name of Jesus. Saul is called and commissioned to be the apostle to the Gentiles. Icons, as you may know, are written to draw us into the setting as one who is present not an observer, but a participant. The scene is so familiar. We meet Jesus at the start of his ministry, <clears throat> walking along the lake, watching the fishermen. Follow me and I will make you fish for people, he says. Now, just after daybreak by the Sea of Tiberias, not Galilee, the disciples are fishing. Jesus calls out to them with advice and their nets become so full they cannot haul them in. Fish on this early morning and people, converts, in the years of ministry they shared with him. Breakfast on the shore, fish and bread broken and shared. So many meals shared, so many teachings, so many conversations, the most meaningful moments shared with him. The circle widens as we watch and bids us into the sea, 
into the boat, onto the shore, and to the fire, fish and bread, blessed and broken. We remember and give thanks. We are called and commissioned to tell the story. And now another encounter. Simon, son of John, do you love me? Feed my lambs, tend my sheep, feed my sheep. Three is a magical number in scripture. Whenever we see it, we should wonder. And in this case, how many times did Peter deny Jesus before the cock crew? This, I think, Jesus asking Peter about the state of his faith. Do you love me enough to care for those entrusted to you in the face of immense and unknowable obstacles? I think it's important to note that faith for our gospel writer John is not a decision made once and for always. Peter is an example of that. Faith is a personal commitment to Jesus Christ expressed in words, worship, and obedience. Peter has been the enthusiastic follower, the uncertain questioner, the leader, the fearful one, the faithful one, the defiant one, the rock upon which the church was founded, and the one entrusted to care for those whom Jesus loved. Is he up to the task? Alpha and Omega, first and last, beginning and end. The appearance of Jesus today brings us back to the beginning, reminds us of where we have been, and calls and commissions us to live into our baptismal vows as Jesus, Paul, and Peter did. Where they began is not where they ended. Someone took them where they did not wish to go. But God was with them on the journey and in the end. It is their faith that makes ours possible. It is their vision that gives us hope. It is their mission that we inherit. And it is their love for one another that abides in us. The last words of Jesus to a world that crucified him was faith, not uncertainty. Unity, not isolation. Forgiveness, not hate and grace, not judgment. These are God's call to us in the mission of the church. Faith, unity, forgiveness, and grace. May God give us the will to make it so.